Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about the MOSFET, one of the most important electronic components today. They're the primary transistor in most processors, or at least a variant of the FETIS, and it's really useful for use in digital circuits. This will be a practical guide showing how MOSFETs can be used for switching large loads. It's going to cover choosing a MOSFET, how to find essential information from the datasheet, and shows a practical circuit built on a PCB used for controlling disco lights and NeoPixels. This can be used on a Raspberry Pi computer or a microcontroller, such as an Arduino, Microbit or the Raspberry Pi Pico. The MOSFET is a semiconductor device similar to the bipolar transistor which I've already covered in my previous video. I'll be making some comparisons to the bipolar transistor throughout this video, so you may want to watch that video first but you should still be able to follow this video without watching that. The MOSFET stands for Metal Oxide Silicon, which is how it's made. Field Effect Transistor, which is how it operates. The main difference compared with the bipolar transistor is that MOSFETs are voltage controlled, actually based on charge, but effectively we use a voltage to turn these on and off. The MOSFET is generally much more efficient in terms of current used and voltage drop across it. There are other types of FETs which have different characteristics, but the MOSFET is commonly used in hobby electronics. The MOSFET and other FVT technologies are more widely used than the bipolar transistor, both in integrated circuits and as a discrete component. In this video, I'll give you some example uses of the MOSFET, how it can be used as a digital switch to turn on large loads. The projects can all be used with a Raspberry Pi, Arduino, the microbit and the Raspberry Pi Pico. This shows some example MOSFETs along with the circuit symbol. The MOSFETs have three pins labelled D for the drain, G for the gate and S for the source. These are roughly equivalent to the collector, base and emitter on the bipolar junction transistor. The photos show three different types of MOSFET. The one on the left is a BSS138 in an SOT23 surface mount package. This is the one that Adafruit use on their logic level converter. The middle one is a TN7000 in a TO92 package. This is a common MOSFET used in hobby electronics for switching smaller loads. And then the right hand one is an IRL520 in a TO220AB package, which is useful for switching larger loads and can be connected to a heatsink. These are common MOSFETs that I use although there are many other different types available. This image shows how the MOSFET can be used as a switch. With no charge on the gate, then no current can flow from the drain to the source. When we apply a voltage to the gate, VGS, then the gate becomes positively charged and the MOSFET switches on. When the MOSFET is switched on, it allows a current to flow from the drain to the source, shown as ID, current through the drain. The input to the gate is a high impedance, which means there's very little current flowing into the MOSFET. This reduces wasted energy and reduces the problems we have with the current required for the bipolar junction transistor. This does mean the gate is more susceptible to noise. It's important that the gate is either connected to a positive voltage to turn the MOSFET on, or down to ground to turn it off. It should not be left in a floating state. Another feature of the MOSFET is that the junction between the gate and source acts as though it's a capacitor. This has implications for how we turn the MOSFET on at the gate, which will be explained later. Now let's look at a practical example of switching a very large load. In this case, LED disco lights. These are PAR16 theatre lights. Note that these are low voltage type. Do not use this circuit with lights that connect directly to the mains electricity supply. Also, this is designed for LED bulbs only. Halogen bulbs can pull a lot more current than LED bulbs. Potentially, you could use this circuit for halogen bulbs, but you would need to look at using heat sinks for the MOSFET and a larger power supply. With LED bulbs using much less power, it just makes sense to use LED bulbs anyway. The bulbs I have are suitable for 12 volt AC or DC. Using a MOSFET, this will need to be DC. There are five watt LEDs, so each run about, at about 400 milliamps. The circuit is designed for a 12 volt DC supply, so 
This being run off a 12 volt plug-in power supply using a power brick adapter. The power brick is capable of providing up to 10 amps of current, which is more than enough for the four LEDs. First, to select an appropriate MOSFET. I'll be using the component data sheet to check the maximum values. As I've said earlier, I use either a 2N7000 or an IRL520, as these are the ones I have to hand. Looking at the least expensive first, the 2N7000 is about one third the cost of the IRL520. The 2N7000 can only be used for continuous currents up to 200 milliamps, compared to the 400 milliamps we need. So that's not appropriate. So we now need to look at the IRL520. This is the IRL520 data sheet. This can support up to 10 amps, so that's more than sufficient. Note that's assuming a gate to source voltage of 10 volt, which is more than we'll be using here. The actual characteristics are shown in a graph, which shows typical currents for different gate to source voltages. I've marked 3.3 volts on this graph, which shows an actual current of around 6 amps still much more than we need. Whilst we're looking at the data sheet, it's worth taking a look at the voltage dropped across the drain and source and how this compares to the bipolar transistor. Whereas the bipolar transistor had a voltage drop across the collector to emitter, which is normally fixed, assuming saturation, the MOSFET acts more like a resistor. The value given is RDS on. In this case, the value given is 0.18 ohms. With 400 milliamps, that would be a voltage drop of 70 millivolts, which is much less than the voltage drop across a bipolar transistor. So this is much more efficient. Again, slightly more complicated than that as the RDS on resistance varies depending upon the gate to source voltage and the temperature of the junction. An example graph is shown of how the temperature changes the resistance. But this is all negligible here for such a small current so I won't go into it in any more detail. Here's a schematic diagram for a single LED controlled by a MOSFET switch. The circuit shows a supply of 12 volts, which is separate from any connections on the Raspberry Pi or microcontroller, but it does share the same ground connection as the signal source. We only need to do one simple calculation at this point. We don't need to work out RL, that's included inside the LED package. We already know that the resistors in the LED are designed for a 12 volt power supply. I have included a resistor called RG for the resistor entering the gate. This is the equivalent of the RB base resistor used on the bipolar junction circuit. Based on my comments earlier about the gate having a high impedance and so negligible current going into the gate, this resistor is often omitted in some circuits. However, as I said, the gate to source junction acts like a capacitor. This means that when a voltage is applied to the gate, then there will be a surge of current as the capacitor charges. On the IRL520, this is around 440 picofarads. The initial surge of current could exceed the maximum current from the Raspberry Pi or the microcontroller, causing permanent damage. So I've added a resistor here to restrict the current from the controller. This is a simple calculation using Ohm's law. The formula is shown that the resistance is equal to the voltage in volts divided by the current in amps. Assuming the Raspberry Pi, which has 3.3 volt output, restricting it to 16 milliamps gives a value of 206 ohms. The nearest standard value greater than that is 220 ohms, so that's what should be used as a minimum. When I come to add four MOSFET controlled lights, I actually increase the resistance value again to 470 ohms which restricts the current for each to around 7 milliamps. This is because we are likely to turn all four MOSFETs on at the same time, and I didn't want to exceed the 50 milliamps total maximum current for the GPIOs. For the short period of time taken to charge the gate, you could probably get away without using any resistors at all, but for the sake of a few low cost resistors, compared to the risk of damage to a Raspberry Pi, I prefer to err on the side of caution. You could use larger resistor values, but the larger the resistor, then the longer it takes for the MOSFET to turn on. That's not a problem with this circuit, but it's something to be aware of if fast switching is important. Here is a diagram of a breadboard layout that I used for testing with a micro bit. For the final version, I created a full printed circuit board, which I'll explain towards the end of this video.
The demonstration shown at the start of this video was created using a sequence running on the microbit. This diagram shows the full circuit with all four LEDs, which is connected to a Raspberry Pi. I've also added a fuse, as whilst the power supply includes short circuit protection, it can provide a lot of power in the event of a fault, so it's safer to have a fuse in this. This is connected in line between the power connector and the printed circuit board. This video is focused on the hardware side rather than the software, but I'll quickly explain some of the software required to turn the MOSFET on. In all cases, it's just a case of setting the output to high, although there are differences between the two. The first example is for the Raspberry Pi, shown in Python GPIO0. This creates an LED object and then uses the on and off methods to turn the output high and low. The Raspberry Pi Pico uses MicroPython. This is based on the same programming language, but instead of using GPIO0, it uses the machine module. The code then sets the pin as an output and writes the value of 1 to turn it on. The next example is for the Arduino using C++. The appropriate pin is set as an output and then digital write is used to set the pin high or low. Finally the micro bit example here is shown using make code digital write block. This uses a 1 to set the high output high and a 0 to set it low. So these all show you how to turn on a single LED. You just repeat the code for each of the four LEDs. You can then create different sequences such as a light chaser where one LED is turned on at a time in sequence or you can have the LEDs flash alternatively on and off. Finally a quick look at the printed circuit board that I created. The PCB also includes additional circuitry shown in another use of a MOSFET which we've not covered yet. Effectively the bottom third of the board is voltage level shifter used to control neopixels. I'll be covering that in a future video. The top two thirds of the board is this circuit covered in this video. You can see the four IRL520 MOSFETs, each with their own resistor. There are then terminal connectors used to connect the controller and the LEDs. These have been deliberately connected using terminals for the inputs and outputs, so it's not tied into a particular controller. This can be connected to a microbit, Arduino, Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi Pico or even a digital electronic circuit created using integrated circuits. I haven't got a video covering how I designed this particular PCB, but I have created one on how I created a printed circuit board in Fritzin used as a Raspberry Pi hat. You may want to watch that video for inspiration on how to create a PCB. I'll also put more information on my website, penguintutor.com. You may also want to look at some of the other videos I've created on controlling model railways which looks at how FETs can be used to create a H-bridge driver for controlling model motors. The disco light example used in this video is also included in my book Learn Electronics with Raspberry Pi, published by A-Press. The second edition of this book is available from usual booksellers or directly from A-Press. My next video on the MOSFET will be on using the MOSFET as a voltage or logic level converter including how it can be used to interface between a Raspberry Pi and NeoPixels to increase the 3.3 volts from the GPIO to 5 volts. It will also explain how to connect to Raspberry Pi and Arduino through the use of bidirectional logic level converters.